After years of moving from one location to the next, the Lloydminster Rescue Squad will soon have a permanent space to call home. As Michaela Henschel reports, what started off as an idea written on a napkin has quickly become a reality thanks to support from the community. You know, for 33 years we've, we've looked for a, a place to stay and we've moved and, and this is going to be our final uh, spot. From napkin concept to reality, the squad's new 22 by 52 foot office space is already coming along and will soon have a roof. We go down there once a week and we just sit there and we smile and, and we go, this we can hardly wait to, to the, uh, to the um, final destination. That long-awaited final destination wouldn't have been a reality without the help of Boundary Ford, who's been a key part of the process from the beginning. You know, after hearing their story and hearing, uh, you know, uh, with the conditions in which they work in and everything right now and how much they give back to the community, that was very uh, important to us, uh, Boundary Ford, to be able to do whatever we could to, to make this happen and to give back. And then it just kind of grew from there. It's, it's hard to describe how we feel. It's just elated. They've come up with about $45,000 uh, towards this project. And, and without that help, uh, you know, this, this would not have um, been made possible. After the funding was secured, the squad and Bannery Ford partnered with the Lloydminster Comprehensive, where students in construction and electrical classes have been hard at work building the new space from the ground up. They definitely deserve it, as do uh, the students, and it uh, gives them a, a project that they can uh, look forward to and uh, kind of be part of uh, forever. Over 10 local businesses and organizations have already pitched in by donating supplies and services. With the project expected to be finished by June, it's the simple things that have members excited. Finally, to have air conditioning in the summer, it, it might not be a big deal to a lot, but uh, when you come back from a call and it's plus 30 inside your building, it's, uh, it's hard to uh, wind down. The community project still needs donations before it can be complete. Anyone who wants to get involved can contact the rescue squad. We're a community. We're one. So let's do this together. Michaela Henschel, New Cap News. Now closer to home, a Lloydminster author has released his second book in a series of literature surrounding science, facts, and religion. So the first book is, uh, is the answer, because we're all looking for an answer to our problems, right? So the first book is, uh, is, a, is the answer, and the second book is the reason why we need the answer. Mark Toop is the author of What Happens at the Rapture, which was published two years ago. The second book, titled A Strong Delusion, is his newest piece. Actually, the book is a very comp comprehensive book. It tells a very large story and condenses it down in the form of a book. So it goes into world history, uh, right from the, the dawn of time up into modern history. So it deals with uh, pre-flood, post-flood eras. Toop's first book received high ratings from readers, and with the second book touching on even more topics, fans should be able to make many connections. The rapture is, uh, of course, a prophecy that's not happened yet, so it's very subjective. Now the second book is objective, so it's fact after fact after fact after fact. Mark Toop will be at the Coles Bookstore in Lloyd Mall 11 to 4 p.m. Saturday for a book signing. One dollar of every book sold will be donated to local charities. Well, Jeffrey Straker and the Saskatoon Symphony Orchestra take to the stage in Lloydminster this weekend, and you have a chance to take in a community dinner theater in Kitscotty. Heather Clagus has the details in this week's edition of What's Happening. If the snow and cold have been getting you down, you know what's going to put you in a great mood? Some live music at the Vic Juba Community Theatre and a really neat show going to be on stage tomorrow night. Jeffrey Straker and joining him going to be members of the Saskatoon Symphony Orchestra, the Chamber Players. So they're going to team up to make some incredible music and you can still get tickets for this show. A really great night out. All you have to do is stop by the Vic Juba Community Theatre box office or you can go online vicjubatheatre.ca. This weekend, it's opening weekend for Kitscotty Community Dinner Theatre. You can still get a few tickets to see how the other half dies. It's a great comedy with great local talent. It's on next weekend as well. Plus, they always have fantastic food when you head out to Kitscotty. It's going to be held at the hall and a fundraiser for the hall to help with upkeep and help them to host other great events, including movie nights. If you want to get your tickets really easy, just stop by Mason Agencies in Kitscotty. 
If your motto is 18 till I die, we've got the soundtrack for you. We want you to win a copy of Brian Adams' ultimate hits. Two new songs on here, but also his biggest hits, including Cuts Like a Knife and Summer of 69. If you want a copy, all you have to do is email your name and daytime phone number to tvcontest at newcap.ca. We want to say thanks to John at Universal Music Canada for setting us up with the music. And this month is a busy month at the Legacy Centre here in Lloydminster. They've got their dinner theatre coming up at the end of the month. And coming up on Thursday night, it's Country Legends Tribute Tour. You can get tickets for that by stopping by the Legacy Centre. Well, whatever you choose to do this weekend, I hope you have a great one. I'm Heather Cleggis, and that's what's happening. This is New Cap Sports. Seven months of Rustlers Athletics wrapped up Thursday evening with the annual awards banquet. Josh Ryan has more on another dominant season. Rustlers Athletics didn't have a national championship banner to put a stamp on the college season this time around. However, a national bronze, conference gold and conference silver are just a few highlights from the 2017-2018 campaign. As usual, the awards banquet was a great way for students and staff to celebrate a year of hard work, especially considering recent budget cuts. Nine athletes were selected to all conference teams this season, which Al Rogan credits to the efforts of each head coach. If you can retain quality coaches, then student athletes come to play for coaches and quality programs. And I think our coaches have been, been able to do that across all of our sports where you know, they've been able to build programs with a solid foundation to them. The evening was capped off with the male and female athletes of the year, P.J. Gardner of the men's basketball team and Ray Sigurdsson of women's volleyball. Their squad continued to make history for Lakeland, becoming the first wrestlers team to defend a conference championship. Uh, to win back-to-back -back ACAC championships um, was incredible. Um, and then to medal at nationals back-to-back -back years is also is just unreal for our, for our program and for Lakeland College. Collectively, there is something for every athlete to be proud of. The teams combined for a 2.8 grade point average, and several athletes graduated in their fifth and final season. It's just refreshing to see everybody at the end of the year, after the season's done, uh, go up there and have smiles on their face and reflect on the season. Another high point in the year for Rogan was hosting the futsal championship in March. Being able to um, show Lloyd Minster this high level of futsal was something that uh, I think was a really good experience for a lot of people in the community. And uh, it, it's, it's great whenever we can host a championship here. It's something that will continue next season. Cross Country will host the championship this fall in Vermilion, while the wrestlers have put a bid in on the men's basketball championship in the winter. They've definitely earned the right for us to put a bid in for them over the last number of years with the effort and uh, success they've had. Um, we have a huge basketball following, so I, I think it would be huge for the community, be huge for the college. Rogan has already set new goals for 2019, a collective student GPA of 3.0, more teams in the ACAC playoffs, and three teams competing for a national championship. Lofty expectations, but considering the growth of Rustlers Athletics over the past two years, perhaps a nod is a more appropriate response than raised eyebrows. Josh Ryan, Newcap Sports, Lakeland College. This is UCAP weather. Once again, folks, we are slowly heading to warmer weather, despite uh, the disappointment that I'm sure many of you feel with uh, being stuck around minus 10. Things are going to get better. They're just not going to get up to the average temperature we usually see this time in April. Quick look at the next 24 hours, as you can see here, uh, low pressure system developing in the southwest. And you can see here some clouds of precipitation making their way across over the course of tomorrow morning. And then uh, low pressure system developing there could bring some precipitation, but it won't hit us until late tomorrow night if it hits us in the amount that it'll probably hit other areas of the province. Uh, current temperatures across the region, you can see here at minus 11 in both Vermilion and Wainwright, minus 9 out in St. Paul and in Vegreville, as well as out into Edmonton, minus 7 in Green Lake and Meadow Lake, uh, and minus 10 over in St. Wahlberg, a few minus 9s down at the bottom of your screen, including at Provost and Mackland. More central Alberta and Saskatchewan is minus 9 out in Whitecourt. Athabasca up north sitting at minus 10. 
though like the rest of the province, and sitting with a largely clear skies, and we should have clear skies through most of the overnight. Minus four out in Jasper, they've got it a little bit better than the rest of us, uh, certainly better than Melfort and Saskatoon that both sit at minus 16. And now uh, your national weather board there, minus nine again out in Edmonton. Vancouver cooling down to 12. They were sitting at 15 through most of the day. Minus 11 in Regina, also cooling down a little bit over the past hour. And Toronto joining that group now is in the low pluses for most of the day, now at zero degrees. Plus one in Quebec City. St. John's, unfortunately, still sitting at minus four and uh, plenty of snow hitting that region. Minus nine still in the Battlefords. While it remains sunny, the uh, west-northwest winds still bouncing around and keeping that wind chill around minus 15. It'll get pretty cold overnight at minus 23, add in some wind out of the northwest, and then it'll be minus 8 tomorrow afternoon. But southeast winds that could get up to 30 kilometers an hour are going to bump that temperature up once again, could get into the minus 20 range for wind chills. So watch out if you're in the Battlefords tomorrow afternoon. Minus five right now in the Lakeland area with calm skies and calm winds. Minus 20 expected uh, overnight uh, where the wind will slowly start to pick up and by tomorrow could get near 20 kilometers. Only a high of minus three expected, though it will be very sunny. And uh, this is the current temperature here in the Midwest. Minus 22 expected overnight, and then minus 8 expected as the high once again for tomorrow afternoon. The wind will, sh the wind will shift from the south-southwest to the east-southeast by tomorrow, and again, near 30 kilometers. So that's going to bounce up that wind chill uh, for tomorrow. Uh, minus 4 expected to be the high on Sunday, and again, a chance of precipitation overnight, but it wouldn't hit till late in the evening. 48% chance of that right now. Minus nine then. The overnight low plus one on Monday, so a quick jump in temperature there. Plus three on Tuesday, minus two on Wednesday, minus one both Thursday and Friday, uh, and lows of minus nine to finish off the week. Again, a little bit colder than average for this time of the year, but a, certain, a marked improvement rather compared to the rest of the week.